I can't be happy in all areas of my life at the same time. I can either have a really successful career or I can have a happy life. Or I can either have a very successful career or a really happy relationship, right? Um, or here's the best one probably. <laughs> I can either have a very successful career or take care of myself and practice self-care. And this is really all of the work. This is why I'm doing this work. And this is why I built um, the Peak Performance Method because I really believe that you can actually have both. Do you consider yourself a high achiever? Smart, driven, highly successful? I am so excited to have you. My name is Julia Arndt and I'm the host of the Stress Podcast. I will help you develop your stress resilience the same way you've developed your workplace superpowers. Learn peak performance tools to thrive at work and in your personal life. Let's get started. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Stress Podcast. It is my absolute pleasure today to welcome you to a very new format that I call Conversations with Julia. And I'm really excited to have a couple of live guests today <laughs> that are part of the recording that you might hear more about towards uh, the end of the recording and podcast. But if you are curious to be part of the next Conversations with Julia podcast, make sure to register. The link to the form is in the show notes. And the best way to support me and say thank you for this episode is by sharing it with one person that would benefit from this content. I know you've been doing this because in the past two months, the download rates of the podcast have tripled, which is so, so exciting. And I'm so grateful for that. And I've actually just had a podcast listener in the plan your week with julia format meetings on monday mornings as well and it's just so fun to engage with you it's so nice to hear what is helpful where do you need more input and insight so thank you so much for being here for me as well and um, yeah so besides joining this special series as a guest in the future you can also sign up for my plan with me or plan your week with me on Monday calls, which is a 30 minute free Zoom call where I help you plan your week and coach you through any specific questions you may have. And the link to the sign up for that is in the show notes as well. So without further ado, I do want to jump with you today in a very special topic. And the topic that I want to chat with you about today is the high achievers mindset, break limits for extraordinary results. As you know, and as you may identify with, high achievers often possess a strong drive for success and accomplishment. However, at the same time, they may also harbor certain limiting beliefs that can hinder their progress or well-being. And this is why I chose this topic today, because the way of how I choose this topic, honestly, is by <laughs> having these uh, challenges myself in my day-to-day -day life, because I do as well consider myself as a high achiever and peak performer. And I struggle with these things, even though from the outside world, people may think I'm a super strong person and I'm a super confident person. And it's probably true in some of some areas of my life. It might not always be true in all areas of my life. And I struggle with limiting beliefs just like any other person struggles with that as well. So I want to talk with you today about these limiting beliefs. I want to identify a couple of those, help you identify those, because that's always the first step to improvement and change in your life is by really creating awareness of what's actually there and what uh, might hold you back from fulfilling your true and full potential. So one thing that I do want to share with you as well, before we jump into a couple of the limiting beliefs um, that I have seen people hold from obviously my work with over 8,000 people over the last four and a half years, I want to share with you the definition of what actually is a high achiever, or as you know, I call them the peak performers. And I'd like you to just sit back, maybe you're sitting in the car right now listening to this podcast or you're sitting, you know, somewhere or maybe you're walking around and I'd like you to just really pause for a moment and reflect on what pieces of this definition actually resonates with you and where do you find yourself where you're like, yeah, that's uh, probably me. So 
So here it is. A peak performer is extremely self-motivated and self-disciplined, hardworking and reliable. Their core belief is that working hard is the key to success and finding fulfillment in life. I have worked hard my whole life. I am so busy and I have zero time. I want to please everyone, say they like me and see the value in me. And I'm very good at what I do and it will pay off are part of their belief system. Peak performers are results driven, externally motivated and thrive with recognition and approval from others. They believe that life is competitive. They are confident on the outside insecure often on the inside imposter syndrome alert and are never really satisfied with their results with hard work and dedication they have always been the best at everything they set out to do even though they might not fully believe that they are in fact one of the best so take a moment to think about this right there is a there's been a there was a lot of things in there <clears throat> and this was something that i put together years ago, actually, um, as part of writing my first book proposal to write about the burnt out high achievers and burnt out peak performers. And it's, it's interesting because it came to my mind as I was preparing for this podcast episode today. And I was thinking to myself, man, that's, it still rings so true to me. And I'm always curious um, to hear as well, how much that rings true to you. So you have any thoughts on that let me know but um yeah so that's that's kind of the peak performer <laughs> as as a persona so let's talk a little bit about what are the limiting beliefs of those peak performers and what is getting in the way the first thing um, that you might connect with is perfectionism high achievers often strive for perfection in their work leading to a belief that anything less than perfect is a failure or not good enough. This belief can create excessive pressure, fear of making mistakes, and can prevent them from taking risks or moving forward. So again, as I'm going through these seven different limiting beliefs, I'd like you to really check in with yourself and see which one of these resonates the most with you. So number one is perfectionism. The second one is the fear of failure. High achievers may have a deep-seated fear of failure, which can make them overly cautious and resistant to stepping out of their comfort zone. This fear can hinder their ability to take calculated risks or pursue new opportunities. And I find this one particularly interesting because as a high achiever yourself, you probably got to the point where you're at today by actually taking risks. And by pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, by applying to incredible internships, by applying to incredible universities and companies, and by actually getting these jobs, and by applying to different roles, and by applying to those next levels in the corporate world, or even maybe by starting your own business, you actually put yourself out there. And that's, I'm already giving a little bit of a way <laughs> of one of the tools that you can do to overcome these limiting beliefs. And I'll talk more about that later, but I'm, I just want to kind of give that hint here to make that connection is to really reflect on, um, reflect on past experiences and gather contrary evidence. Um, so that's a really interesting one, right? Because oftentimes when we are getting older, we feel like I can't do this anymore. This feels super uncomfortable. I can't put myself for whatever reason out of that comfort zone anymore, but you probably did in the past. So we'll talk about this later, but the limiting belief number two is the fear of failure. The third one is the need for external validation. I already mentioned that in the definition of a peak performer, and that's honestly something that resonates the most deeply with me. And I also know that resonates with a lot of you and a lot of my clients that I've worked with in the past four and a half years, because we really like external recognition. And I would say to a part, that's a human need and it's very, very normal. <clears throat> and at the same time, it can, if we just make our happiness dependent on how our external world reacts to us, that's obviously not a very healthy way to live because if we don't receive that external recognition and validation, we might start to feel 
unsuccessful. So some high achievers rely heavily on external validation, constantly seeking approval and recognition from others. This belief can be limiting because it ties your self-worth to the opinions and judgments of others, leading to a constant need for validation and potentially ignoring your own intrinsic motivation. And one more thing that I would like to share about that is as I was going through burnout in the summer of 2018, that was a huge problem because I felt so lost inside myself that I think the more and that's that was a really indication for me as well of burnout in hindsight, which I obviously wasn't aware of at the time. But um, yeah, looking back, I made my happiness so dependent on how my external world recognized me or approved of me no matter if it was my colleagues my manager the leaders but also the people in my close um in my close circle so my partner at the time my friends and i just i just didn't bring it up myself to have this self compassion and self love which is another really important thing that we'll talk about in a little bit here so yeah external validation is a really interesting one and can be a huge limiting belief that can hold you back from fulfilling your full potential. Number four is the scarcity mindset. High achievers may believe that there are limited opportunities available and that you must constantly compete and strive to secure your share. This mindset can lead to a sense of constant pressure and scarcity, potentially preventing you from taking time for self-care or maintaining a healthy work-life balance. Uh, well, I'm sure that some of you can relate to that one because especially in at the moment's world and economy, right, where I think I just read a super interesting statistic yesterday that about 160,000 tech employees got laid off in 2022 and 2023. So imagine all the people that have now had this experience and also the other side of the people that are still at the companies, but that are almost feeling this like survivor guilt of, okay, in order for this to never happen to me, I need to work even harder, all right? So that is a very dangerous limiting belief, the scarcity mindset, thinking that there's only limited opportunities out there that can really kill you in the process. Um, hopefully not kill you, but it can make you pretty sick if you are um, neglecting yourself, your self-care and your work-life balance. The fifth one is difficulty delegating. High achievers often have a strong sense of responsibility and may struggle with delegating tasks. You may believe that you are the only one capable of completing a task to your high standards. This belief can lead to burnout, lack of trust in others, and the inability to leverage the skills and expertise of your team. <laughs> Kelsey just says that one feels like a big one to me. Yeah. And I can totally relate to this one as well. And I think it comes with time and, and trust. Honestly, um, I have two such wonderful people now on my team of Julia on coaching. I have a wonderful editor, as you know, I've talked to her about her many times before. And I also have a VA, a virtual assistant, and she is so incredible as well. And I'm so, so grateful to have her. And it's been interesting. Actually, yesterday, I had a conversation with her about some strategy and it didn't even occur to me at first, kind of internally struggling with that challenge in my mind to ask her for advice or to ask her if she how she would go about this. But I kind of mentioned it to her because we've started to create this trust over the last couple of months working together. And she helped me so much. And I thought to myself, oh, <laughs> why did I not do this earlier? This feels so good to feel heard and seen and supported. And it feels so good to not have to figure out everything on your own because sometimes just not possible and I have my blind spots and I don't see everything that's going on especially after four and a half years of doing my own business and doing it by myself most of the time <laughs> it's really good to have that so yeah I'm I'm glad though um, Kelsey that's resonating with you the almost last one we have two more the sixth one is workaholism this is also a very hard word for me to say so I apologize <laughs> ahead of time if that uh, comes across weird but here is the definition. High achievers may believe that working long hours and sacrificing personal time is necessary for success. Totally believe that. 
a lot of the times I'm working on it. This belief can lead to neglecting other areas of your life, such as relationships, health, personal well-being, ultimately impacting your overall happiness and fulfillment. And I think, honestly, that is one of the biggest reasons, in combination with all of these other ones, um, where, you know, sorry, let me say this again, this is one of the reasons why I think a lot of people experience burnout. Because we work so, so hard, because we want the external recognition, because we feel like nobody else can do it as well as we can, because we feel like um, it needs to be perfect and nobody else can do it perfectly well. So um, all of these can kind of come together and create a burnout as well. And then here's the last one, which is all or nothing thinking. High achievers may fall into the trap of thinking that they must excel in every aspect of their lives. This belief can create a constant sense of pressure and dissatisfaction, as you may feel like you are failing if you can't achieve perfection in every area simultaneously. And this is a good one as well to think about, because maybe you one of your beliefs might also be, I can't be happy in all areas of my life at the same time, which means I can either have a really successful career or I can have a happy life or I can either have a very successful career or a really happy relationship, right? Um, or here's the best one, probably. <laughs> I can either have a very successful career or take care of myself and practice self-care. And this is really all of the work this is why I'm doing this work and this is why I built um, the peak performance method because I really believe that you can actually have both and I just came off of a wonderful call with a client that just completed the 10-week peak performance method program and she made incredible amounts of progress really when I started working with her in February and she just um recorded a testimonial for me as well so I think it's it's okay for, for me to share a couple of things but she was saying she was so burnt out and she was so unhappy with her job and she was in such a negative thought uh, cycle and pattern and she made so much progress in five months so there and you know and now she's made that realization that she can have both she can have a really successful career and she can have a happy life which I think just five months ago she didn't believe that so there is a uh, there's hope. <laughs> There's hope for improvements because oftentimes we think, man, I don't know how to break through that. And the thing that she said to me today was, it is so hard to get started, to take that first step and make this conscious decision to say, I'm actually investing in myself. So for you now, the question for my live guests today that are on the podcast with me today, the question is, does any of these resonate with you? I'll repeat them one more time here really quickly. Identify the one or two limiting beliefs that ring the most true for you. And I'd like you to formulate it into an I am statement. So you could, for example, say, I feel like or I am not good enough. Or it could be, for example, I'm a failure if I don't produce work at all times. And these I am statements are so powerful because it speaks directly to you and it creates your rea reality, which is really important. So you believe that statement. So you might not be totally aware of it, which is why we're creating this awareness right now. So think about it for a moment and leave a comment in the chat. What would be an I am limiting belief statement that rings particularly true to you right now? And I'll read to you the seven top Limiting beliefs for peak performers. Number one, perfectionism. Number two, fear of failure. Number three, the need for external validation. Number four, scarcity mindset. Number five, difficulty delegating. Number six, workalism. And number seven, all or nothing thinking. And this is obviously not an exhaustive list. There's many, many more other limiting beliefs, but I would say those are the top seven ones that ring true a lot to me as well. Um, and obviously not just for my live guests today on the Conversations with Julia podcast, but also for you listening to this episode right now. Take a moment to really reflect what rings most true to you. Mm hmm Kelsey says, I'm the only person who can do this correctly to my personal standards. Mm -hmm. 
Hugo says, I'm a recovering perfectionist. Yeah. There's already some, some shift in there, which is wonderful. So maybe the old limiting belief in I am statement would be I am a perfectionist. <laughs> and then the new one, which we're talking about here in a moment, would be I am a recovering perfectionist. Or it could also be something around I am okay with 80% of the work done or 80% quality. And then Lenny is sharing I am only worthy if I get that next degree. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So... I know this is not very easy sometimes to uh, assume. So thank you so much for sharing that with me. I think one of the biggest ones still for me is I'm not good enough. I think this always comes up for me in all different kinds of forms and ways. And I've been working very hard on working through that. And um, I want to share a couple of tools with you today, obviously, in order to break through these limiting beliefs and build that high achiever success mindset. I already mentioned at the beginning, what do you need to do in order to break through limiting beliefs? You need to be aware of it. If you're not aware of it, you're, you're never going to change anything about you. So you need to spend that time and that self-reflection to actually identify this is what is holding me back. So awareness is the first thing. And then the other two things that I find super helpful and super powerful when it comes to change is reflection and intentional effort. So intentionally asking yourself, what can I do differently to that belief than I have done before? And I want to explain to you something that I call the reality loop. The reality loop, as you can imagine, is a loop. So it's kind of a circle. And it describes basically that you have certain thoughts and feelings about yourself, right? For example, you are a perfectionist. And because you have this belief about yourself, you think and feel in a particular way, right? So you might think, for example, I need to work another three hours on this because it's still not perfect and... Maybe you're even procrastinating sometimes because you feel like I can't submit this yet because it's not still not there where I want it to be. And you might create a lot of stress and pressure internally on yourself. And so because of those thoughts and feelings that are so interconnected with each other, because the more you think that work needs to be a certain quality, the more you feel that as the more pressure you feel. Right. And so that's already kind of this like negative thought loop cycle, thought feeling loop cycle. And then because of the thoughts and feelings that you have, you take certain actions and it obviously creates these particular behaviors that you have been, you know, that's basically who you are. That's your identity. Because you have been behaving a certain way, right? Because you've been taking action on not submitting the document and working five extra nights um, after work in order to get everything done. All of these things, all of these actions and behaviors make you believe. That's where the reality loop comes in and that, that cycle and circle comes in. Then you believe this is who I am. And I can only do this if this is always that way, right? So you have the same. So then, you know, you obviously also have feedback. For example, you're really successful with this approach. Um, or you get a lot of praise through that approach, right? You get that external validation maybe that you've been seeking. And so because of that, you never break through that limiting belief. You never break through those unhealthy patterns that come with that, you, you know, the unhealthy habits of negative self-talk of working extra hours of putting so much pressure on you internally creating all that stress and so on <clears throat> and so in order to create a new reality loop you need to break through one of these four pieces thoughts feelings behaviors actions and that is those are a few of the tools that i want to share with you now because there are different ways on how you can basically break through those limiting beliefs um, and create a new reality loop. So let's talk about the first one, practice self-reflection and mindset work. So what, you know, what I always encourage you to do, obviously, and I know it's not always easy, which is why we're taking time to kind of create all of that. 
Engage in regular self-reflection well, self -reflection to become more aware of your thoughts, beliefs, and patterns. Consider journaling, meditation, or mindfulness practices to cultivate self-awareness and challenge negative or limiting thought patterns. Additionally, explore resources, resources such as books, podcasts, workshops focused on personal development and growth. So you know that I talk about this all the time. You know that I am a big believer in journaling because it just helps to bring to the surface the things that are sometimes a little bit hidden underneath the surface. And that's why these kind of conversations and these kind of podcasts can really help you to create that awareness because you can think to yourself, hopefully, oh, I'm actually not alone. <laughs> this is actually maybe not normal to feel this way or it is absolutely normal to feel this way in the sense that I feel this way and I can also change it okay so self-reflection mindset work super super important in order to break through this limiting beliefs and one thing that I always say is it's not going to change probably immediately I'm sorry to disappoint here but that's my that's been my experience over the last couple of years is that sometimes you start to build awareness but be between that awareness and taking action there's a gap oftentimes because i feel like you create that awareness and then through that awareness your desire to change gets stronger and stronger sometimes the desire is right there and maybe you'll take action immediately But because oftentimes, unfortunately, we humans are a little lazy and not just lazy in that sense, but, you know, we have a strong identity connection to that, right? We, we really feel like this is who I am. So why should I change? Because that's just the way I am, right? That's something that's really holding us back from shifting these mindsets, um, and then there was one, one other thing that I just thought about. Let me think. So laziness. Oh, and then obviously your brain. <laughs> So laziness, um, identity, and your brain. Because, and you know, I talk about this a lot as well. When we're thinking about how you're, how you're wired, how your brain is wired, there are automatic behaviors. And so your identity basically is created by that reality loop and by those um, wired processes in your brain that, are, that have become fully automatic in order to save you time, in order to help you be more productive. So breaking through these actually requires more energy and it requires at least more awareness and more engaging your prefrontal cortex and so on. And so it can be sometimes challenging to do that, but it's not impossible. Just how my wonderful client just showed us again. The second one that is so, so important for me to mention and is so, so important for you to break through your high achievers limiting beliefs is to practice self-love, self-care and self-compassion. Ah. <laughs> and I again say it out of complete um persuasion and co conviction is the word that I was looking for. I say this out of full conviction because this has been the work over the last, I would say, three years that's been the most difficult because practicing self-love is sometimes, right, like we don't really talk about that, but it's such an important practice because as high achievers, because we are oftentimes so connected to that external validation and recognition, That's the only thing that makes us feel good. So how do we find the internal recognition? How do we celebrate ourselves? It doesn't feel very natural to do that, right? And so that's been something super, super difficult for me to implement in my own life. And yet the most transformative since I started this work three years ago. And, you know, if you've been listening to this podcast for a while <laughs> and you know a little bit of my story, you know that in 2020... I went through a super bad heartbreak and um, I, uh, my, my fiance at the time and I broke up and that was a super difficult time for me. And I realized through this experience that I was so, you know, I always used my self-worth and self-love was connected to how he perceived me. And obviously when that was over, there was no self-love and self-worth because that's what he gave me. So learning this the hard way to be like okay 
how do I give myself that love? How do I listen to what I need? How do I celebrate myself? Um, that was a very interesting process to go through. And it's it's really wonderful because I think once you can really appreciate that, wow, that's going to be such a transformation. And there's a couple of videos actually on my YouTube channel about self-worth and self-love. So if you want to learn a little bit more about those two check it out, check them out. I'll make sure to link it in the show notes as well. Um, one thing, another tool and practice that you can do in order to break through your limiting mindsets is something that I already mentioned earlier on when we talked about the second limiting belief around the fear of failure is to gather evidence to the contrary. So I already mentioned it or kind of started to explain it and describe it a little bit before, but Examining past experiences where your limiting beliefs were proven wrong is very powerful. So look, for instance, where you succeeded despite initially doubting yourself or times when taking risks paid off. Gather that evidence of your capabilities and achievements um, because that can really help you to shift your mindset and build confidence. So like I said before, so it's really interesting. And when we're talking about mindset today, we're talking about kind of that high achievers mindset. But um, you've probably heard me talk a little bit about the fixed mindset and the growth mindset as well. Those two terms were coined by the researcher Carol Dweck, who's a wonderful lady that I highly encourage you to check out. She also wrote a book called Mindset. And um, the fixed mindset is basically believing that you are just hitting a certain level and that that's kind of a reflection of your capabilities. Um, and you people with a fixed mindset, they, for example, don't really love feedback and um, yeah, they, they just, they just have kind of this limited belief about how far they can go and then high achiever. No, let me rephrase this. It's not true. <clears throat> and then the, Growth mindset is basically people believing that they can grow and they are just not there yet. Um, and that every opportunity, every challenge is an opportunity to grow. And there are some high achievers that might have a fixed mindset. There are some high achievers that might have a growth mindset. And you might have both because in some areas of your life, you might actually feel like I can learn, I can grow, I can have failure and challenges and I can try again and I can get better. And then in some other areas, um, you might not feel this way. And that's been something really interesting for me to be aware of as well, because through that practice, I realized there are some areas in my life where I absolutely have the growth mindset. My business 100% is one of those examples because I love building this business. I love helping you and and I, I love this kind of work. And so every time I have a failure, I'm like, okay, how can I try again? What can I do better? And then in other areas of my life, I totally have a fixed mindset, probably in, in relationships, but I'm working on that as well. Anyway, so gather evidence to the contrary. What I find really helpful is to, for example, write it down. As you know, again, journaling is a super important, very powerful self-reflection practice. And it is helpful to write it down because let's be honest, you, you are listening to this podcast right now and even just three seconds is not enough to formulate a thought in your mind. So taking five minutes or 10 minutes to actually reflect on this question will bring up I promise you probably a list of five to 10 things um, where you were successful and that speak to the contrary of what you might believe about yourself. Okay. Um, and then I have two more. The next tool that I have is set realistic expectations, especially here for Hugo, for example, um, about the perfectionist mindset. That's something that's been really important and the work that I've been doing with teams as well around perfectionism is that accepting that things don't have to be 100% because oftentimes, no matter if it is in corporate settings and environments or even in entrepreneurial settings, nobody cares as much as you <laughs> about how perfect this is. This is maybe the tough truth and at the same time maybe a relieving truth we put those expectations on ourselves we are our worst own critic and so one thing that can really help breaking for example through that perfectionist mindset is to set a deadline um, and to maybe even get 
an accountability partner for that deadline or to share that deadline with someone to say, I'm going to going to send XYZ to you on XYZ date. Because then you need to learn to whatever you have up until this point to submit. Um, and one of the feedbacks that I've gotten um, from clients working through those kind of situations was also the realization that you can actually still get input from people. And if it is not 100% where it needs to be, then that's okay because you can actually pivot things, right? Sometimes we work on things and we have just this one perspective, but then because we submit it or we send it and share it with somebody else, we actually get input that helps us to make this work actually really, really good. And you would have never gotten there on your own, which is sometimes the expectation that we have of ourselves. So set expectations, set realistic expectations with yourself. And that's also where the plan your week with Julia again, meeting comes in every Monday at 8 a.m. PSD. Um, I had a wonderful as, as I mentioned, I had a podcast guest, not a podcast guest, I have a podcast listener in the show on, on Monday and we talked about her um, goals for the week and one of her realizations was that she didn't set realistic expectations. And that's so okay because we as high achievers oftentimes have unrealistic expectations of ourselves. So try it out. It works wonders. <laughs> and then finally, the last tool that I want to share with you today on how to break your limiting beliefs and work through your limiting beliefs as a peak performer is to seek support and feedback. This might come easy to you or it might not. Some of us really love feedback and we are really open about it. And sometimes it also depends on who it comes from. Sometimes we don't really like feedback. So check in with yourself as well to see, do I like feedback? Do I not like feedback? Who do I trust? Who are your trusted advisors that you feel like, I know that when I have a problem, I can go to them and they really help me. They really make me feel better. I've talked to them for 10, 15, 30, 60 minutes and I get out of that conversation and I can take a deep breath. And I just feel so much better about myself. So I find it really helpful to create a list of people that are your supporters and to surround yourself with that supportive network and those of individuals who believe in your potential and can provide constructive feedback that you actually take on, right? Because we all know there are people in our lives where it's a little bit harder <laughs> to take constructive feedback, like, for example, family. Um and there are people in our lives that just have this like calming, wonderful, powerful presence on us. So surround yourself with these people and share with them your limiting belief. Share with them what you're working through, what you're trying to work through. Have them be your supporters along the way of making sure that maybe when you are putting specific habits or behaviors in the day that showcase that that believe about yourself, that they hold you accountable to that. And um, yeah, I, I really love that. I have a lot of people um, that I surround myself with that are my cheerleaders. They're literally my cheerleaders. And we all need our cheerleaders in our lives because we all go through more difficult times. We all go through easier times as well. But especially in the more difficult times, it's so good to have those people. I have a business mentor that I really look up to. Um, I ha have my sister. Again, if you've been listening to my podcast, you know, she's a super important person in my life. Um, it's someone that gives me regularly constructive feedback and that, that actually is really helpful for me, even though she's a family member. Um, so yeah, so those are the five tools that I wanted to share with you today on how to break limiting beliefs to uh, be extraordinary I, you are already extraordinary but imagine you ha can have less negative self-talk and more success by not spending that energy on questioning yourself all the time so I'll just I want to summarize those five items as well so the five different practices in order to start breaking through your limiting beliefs are practice self-reflection and mindset work, practice self-compassion, self-love and self-worth, uh, 
gather evidence to the contrary, set realistic expectations and seek support and feedback. So I'm curious to hear now from our audience, what are your biggest challenges? What have you tried? Where have you failed? And what strategy maybe resonated the most with you that you would like to try out in the future? So I'm still thinking on this a little bit. Okay. Um, I think my, my biggest challenge definitely feels like it's around delegation, but mm -hmm. I think it's connected to fear of failure and perfectionism. So I think it's kind of mm -hmm. three combined into one. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the, the fear that if I delegate something that it won't be perfect enough and then there will, that will result in a failure. So what I've tried, um, I have tried delegating and typically it occasionally works. So I'm, I'm looking at the tools to combat and gathering evidence to the contrary feels like a really potent strategy to me of, you know, recalling all the times that I delegated something and it turned out really great. I think that will really help me. Um, and I also think that setting realistic expectations will be helpful and realizing that there is a standard that might not be my ideal vision of perfectionism, um, but that might meet the needs um, of the project or task. So I think setting realistic expectations around the output of others when I'm delegating, it's kind of, that's kind of feeling mm. like a combination that might be helpful here. Totally. Wow. I love that so much. That's so powerful. But you feel like that's kind of a new insight that you've just gained. It's not something that you've tried before. Yeah. I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense, um, mm -hmm. but, but I don't think that I've tried that before. I don't think I've tried mm -hmm. resetting my expectations of others. Um, mm -hmm. Mostly I've just held others to the same standard that I hold myself, which is very mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about kind of the context of how you think about that? Do you have your own company or do you work in the corporate setting? And how do you think about that with like that person maybe that could potentially support you and that you can delegate to? Yeah, so I work in corporate um, outdoor industry, corporate okay. company, um, mm -hmm. and I manage a team. And I'm relatively new to managing the team. I've been a manager mm -hmm. for two years now after mm -hmm. being an individual contributor for about seven years at this company before that. So it's been a bit of a transition. And I think that's where part of the challenge in delegation is, is that I used to be the one doing the work. And then mm -hmm. now I'm the one managing the work. And at our company, it's very typical for managers to kind of be both player and coach, right? We do the work and we manage the work. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I sometimes go too far into being the player and not enough into being the coach mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. And, and so I think that's where this really applies for me is with being able to delegate more to the people that I manage. And I think there are some people that that flows really easily with and mm -hmm. others that it doesn't flow so easily with. So it's, you know, building that, um, Kind of trust and relationship and setting realistic expectations with um with the people that it's tougher to delegate to at this point yeah so powerful and have you had any experience of failure in the past that makes you be in some instances so grippy i think yes i i don't know if i would take it on as a personal failure but there mm -hmm. have certainly been major problems that have happened on mm -hmm. things that I was peripherally involved with, but not really in the details of. And mm -hmm. so I think what that creates for me is this curiosity and wondering, you know, had I been more involved and more in the details mm -hmm. of that project, would it have gone a different way? Could I have prevented this problem from happening? Um, so I work, I work in quality. And so Mm. My life is problems, right? It's, it's <laughs> I try to prevent problems all the time and mm -hmm. it's not always successful. Problems happen, uh, but it's definitely a, uh, a failure fraught career path um, by, by design, right? It's just kind of what it is. 
Mm, very interesting. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, I think, you know, one thought that I had is, is that's kind of the beauty of middle management. And I have a lot of clients as well, you know, that are in, in between those two pieces, right? They just became manager or they've been a manager for two, two, three, four, five years. And, and they have the, you know, the reporting down in terms of like managing their teams and then obviously also reporting up and having this balance that they need to keep. Um, one thing that I haven't mentioned in the podcast and something that I find also really helpful to think about is the worst case scenario. So to put yourself in the, in the shoes of, and that would be, I, I'm curious to hear your answer to this, Kelsey, to ask yourself, maybe in that particular um, example that you just thought of when I asked you if you had a specific failure in the past, what could have literally been the worst case? Yeah, I'm thinking through that. The The worst case would have been that all of the products that were produced failed, right? Like they mm -hmm. all failed in a in this kind of specific way. Mm -hmm. And then let, let's spin that even further. Mm -hmm. So all products failed. And then what? what? What happens because of that? Then the company loses a lot of money uh, trying mm -hmm. to fix it or... Mm -hmm. Our consumers are disappointed and uh, don't believe in the brand anymore, and mm -hmm. it you know erodes that consumer confidence in the brand. Mm -hmm. Great. And how likely is this to happen? That worst case scenario, mm -hmm. has it ever happened? I'd say the first part has happened, where we spent a lot of money fixing problems. Mm -hmm. um, think of a few examples there. Mm -hmm. The second part, it feels tough to answer around consumer mm -hmm. confidence in the brand. And mm -hmm. I suppose what the impact of a certain issue would be on a consumer if we are, you know, over overestimating what their reaction would be versus the reality. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd say it's probably not realistic that all of the consumers would then no longer believe in the brand. I think that's probably an exaggeration of reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here's the last question then. The other question that you can ask yourself is, does that fear stem from a past experience? So maybe even something that you haven't experienced in this particular role and company, mm -hmm. but it could even be an experience you've had in school or at college where you mm -hmm. work together in a team and maybe there was an experience of failure. Anything that comes up for you? Yeah, that's digging that back deep. It puts me into like, mm -hmm. you know, college <laughs> team projects, totally. or oh my high God. school team projects <laughs> and the urge to take over and do all the work and mm -hmm. do multiple all nighters to get through that. I no longer have that problem um, of taking it all on, but, or at least not to that extent. Um, no major failures are coming to mind from that period of life, though. And I think mm -hmm. failure is really different in, you know, like university context, school context. You know, a mm -hmm. bad grade would be the perceived failure, right? Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Yeah. Which at the time, if I remember back to my college and high school years, that was a huge failure for me in yeah. my eyes at the time. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of high achievers can relate to that as well. Certainly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so good questions to ask yourself. So if we summarize it, Kelsey, what would be your biggest takeaway for today? I think my biggest takeaway is to set realistic expectations mm -hmm. for myself and others mm -hmm. and also to gather evidence to the contrary when I'm having one of these mm -hmm. limiting beliefs. I think those mm -hmm. feel like sticky notes I'll put on my monitor and uh, awesome. you know keep myself. Yeah. Yep. And was there a particular I am kind of limiting belief statement. Oh, oh, I actually see it here. So you you wrote down earlier, I'm the only person who can do this correctly to my personal standards. Mm -hmm. So here's the last question for you today, which would be, how can you rephrase that? How can you rephrase, rephrase the I am statement to something that rings more true to you? Mm. And while you think about that, I'll try to pull something up as well. Um, because in the... 
peak performance method uh, program workbook, I actually have a list of uh, affirmations um, and pos more positive, more helpful affirmations. Um, let me see if I can share this. And you can read through them. And because sometimes I find it easier to see it. Um, so you can kind of, and for mm. those of you that are still listening, uh, that are in the live session today, take a look as well. And there's a second page too. So let me know if there's anything that resonates here or I'll, I'll switch to the other one too. Yeah, I like, I like some of these. Something that I just wrote down is I am able to ask for help and trust my mm. team. Mm. Love that. I saw, yeah, Write that list. down on a sticky note and put yeah. that on your monitor. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> because that is, that is that part, that is that switch, that more conscious switch that you have to make at the moment in order to build that new belief. Mm -hmm. Because your go-to will always be the other one that you shared with us earlier. Um, which is, let me pull it back up here. I am the only person who can do this correctly. That is your belief and you've believed that for a long time. So breaking through that will require some more active thinking and 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 changing those behaviors and actions, right? As I, as I explained earlier in the reality loop to really break through that. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for being here today. Any other thoughts questions challenges from our other live guests today hi it's hi, lenny for me for me i really struggle with uh, perfectionism and fear of failure aspect of things um i think this is why i enjoy working for myself and and kind of don't do well um in a very hierarchical space because when i'm told to do something i feel like i can never get to it <laughs> <laughs> right and I'm like you know it's halfway um I don't know how to finish it and if I get any credit in like any criticism in between it's uh you know it's more limiting you know mm -hmm. than and I'm also afraid to ask for help or clarification and things like that um so yeah I don't know <laughs> mm -hmm. So first question for me to clarify. So you so you are self-employed at the moment? Yes. Yes. Okay. And one of your limiting beliefs, and it might just be one of them that you wrote down, was I'm only worthy if I get that next degree. How do you think about that? Are you currently doing a degree on the site as well? I'm not. Um, okay. I, I am, I guess... I've always thought of doing a PhD and it's mm -hmm. been like in the back of my mind just because I love, um, as you mentioned, the personal development stuff and the work. I'm always doing that. Um, and so I've always had that like, oh, maybe I should do a PhD. But technically, in order to do what I'm doing, I don't need it. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. what that is. And can you formulate then maybe another I am statement around you know, you were saying you connected really deeply with the fear of failure and the perfectionist um, kind of mm -hmm. limiting beliefs. What let try try to formulate that again into something that springs true to you? I think for me, I have to really keep reminding myself that I am enough, mm. right? And um, one thing you mentioned earlier is that you know we can be good with like 80%. We don't need to get to 100%. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so funny because it brought me back to my wedding. After I had my wedding, one of my guests told my best friend, your friend is a perfectionist, right? <laughs> because I put a lot of thought into it and it was perfect. Um, nice. And you know, I didn't ask for help. A lot of people wanted to help me. And I said, no, 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. So I kind of like drove myself to the end, but I guess I got a, I had a hard deadline. I planned everything in five months. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I had not identified myself as a perfectionist up until that, com mm -hmm. that comment, but mm -hmm. I see how it really does show up in my mm -hmm. life. I was just writing down the question, how did that make you feel when that person said, oh, your friend is a perfectionist? 
it actually made me feel good then. Uh-huh. That was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. That was a you felt proud, right? I that's what I heard yeah. when you just shared that. Yes, I did. Very much so. I was like, yes, I am. Wasn't it nice? <laughs> <laughs> totally, right? I still it was so nice. I still talk about it even though I'm divorced. <laughs> but oh. I don't I don't I don't regret that. And mm-hmm. um yeah, back then I was very much uh, filled with with pride. Uh, but now I see how it can stop me from doing many other things, right? So that's, is, I really love that you're bringing this up and that you're sharing this. So thank you so much. Identity. You are identified as that persona. You were proud to be that person. And so that's another thing oftentimes why it's so hard to break through these limiting beliefs because there's a part of us that's actually really, really proud to be that way. And we've had success with that. And people, you know, you may have seen this as a praise from that person or may not have. I think you have because the way of how you just shared it and I'm sure how everyone that's just listening was like, yeah, totally sounded, you could hear the pride in your voice. Um. That's something why then sometimes it makes it difficult to break through that identity and say, that's actually not good for me. And I have these conversations a lot, a lot with clients that have that identity. They hold on so tightly. I'm so proud to be this such hardworking person without mm-hmm. realizing that you can have you can have the balance. That, that is the thing, you know, I think oftentimes we are afraid that we we have to fully give up on that pers- persona and identity. It's not about giving it up, actually. It's about finding the balance between having the two, between realizing that that's what you're proud of and that's who you want to stand for and the work that you pr- produce and at the same time do that in a more healthy approach, you know. So the question for me now would be, how has this shown up negatively in your life where you're at a point where you say, I actually don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be this perfectionist anymore. It really stops me from, um, you know, I'm I'm working more independently now um, Mm -hmm. as a contractor. Mm -hmm. So it brings a lot of fear when I don't get an assignment done, right? Of like, oh, if this doesn't get done, I go to that worst case scenario of like, mm-hmm. I, my contract might not get renewed, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, Has that ever happened? Like, no, there's no evidence. As you say, evidence, right? There's no evidence to the contrary, right? I, mm-hmm. I, I've worked at top companies. I've, you know, graduated from top schools. All the good things, every job that I have ever applied to, um, I mean, I have not gotten all of them, but <laughs> I must say I have gotten a lot of jobs, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, there's really no evidence to the contrary of that, but that fear is still there. And I'm like, you have the fear, Lenny. Why don't you just do it? What's stopping you from doing it, right? Mm-hmm. So if you just and do you- it, then that fear is no longer going to be there. Mm-hmm. And you are doing it. That is actually your evidence for keep on going and for pushing through that Mm -hmm. because you are you have created your own business it sounds like it is successful and you have contracts and you have clients Mm -hmm. and I know again from my own experience that it is really hard sometimes to acknowledge that for yourself and that's where that self-worth and that self-confidence and self-compassion comes in where that's so important to take a moment to pause and say I'm actually successful. I have never, it has never happened. I've never failed in that sense. And even if you would fail any, you would learn so much through that because failure is this interesting word that we put on things. But I feel like even when we feel like we failed, you know, like you just said that you you actually got divorced, you could see this as a failure. Some people might see this as a failure, right? In their own lives. Mm-hmm. Um, but what, how, you know, think about how much did you learn from this? How much did you grow from that? Was that really a failure <laughs> or, or was yeah. that actually something that completely opened you up to a new life that you had never maybe even dared of dreaming of before? Absolutely. 100%. I see it as an opportunity and, and mm-hmm. you know, something that uh, completely changed my life um, mm-hmm. for the better, um, you know, 
while at the same time not having any any regrets about having that lived that life you know what I mean does that make sense <laughs> like, 100 of course of course we it's like we it's all... my path and that's what I was supposed to to mm -hmm. go through and then I'm happy you know where I am and wherever I'm going to end up in the future I will be grateful um, to be where I am as well mm -hmm. yeah so beautiful thank you so much Lenny what is your biggest takeaway from this podcast today and the conversation we just had um, my biggest takeaway, um, I, I just want to say thank you for putting in such beautiful terms everything that goes through our minds. <laughs> um, and um, my biggest takeaway is, you know, to not be afraid to share, quote unquote, unfinished work. Mm. Yeah. And what I heard you say as well is your I am statement, the new one would be I am enough. And I maybe there's another one that's even more powerful, but I always highly encourage you put it on a little piece of paper, just like Kelsey said it earlier and stick it somewhere because it's really, I, uh, I've talked about this a lot in YouTube videos and podcasts as well. I've had literally with lipstick on my mirror for, for many, for a very long time, probably for a year or so, um, I'm trying to remember what it was, but it was something like I am worthy of love or something like that, right? As mm -hmm. I was going through the breakup at the time. Um, and that was so powerful. And I was thinking to myself, you know, you hear these things, theoretically, you're listening to a podcast or you read a book and they say, oh, like work with positive affirmations. They're like, yeah, right. It's going to change me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, But it was, I, first of all, I just loved seeing it because it kind of looked cool on my mirror with my red lipstick to have that there. But it really, every time I went to pee, every time I used the bathroom, showered, right, put makeup on, etc., I saw the statement. And it really, because it really needed to trickle into my more subconscious. And so try it out and see um, how that works for you. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for all of you to be here today on the show. Thank you so much for our live guests. Thank you so much for our listeners. If you would like to be part of the next Conversations with Julia podcast, make sure to register. The link to the form is in the show notes below. And then I will inform you about the next topics that I'm planning to put up. And if you like this episode today, the best way to support me and say thank you is to share this episode with one person that you would feel like would benefit from this content. So I wish you a wonderful rest of your day and I hope to hear you in the next episode.